Hi, this is Lennon McCarthy. This is part 9 of my Mass Effect playthrough. So, I think I'm just about done on Citadel. Um, nope, that's the wrong way. Um, I want to check if I can get the next Metagel and Grenade upgrades or not before I leave. So I'm going to go to the markets. Welcome back, Earth Clan. <laughs> Will you be needing supplies for your return to the colonies? You can ask me that every time. Show me what you've got. Most excellent. I am sure you will find something pleasing. Okay. Yeah, there's a Metagel upgrade. Okay, I have hardly any credits. So I probably can't afford anything else. Okay, so go to CSEC. Um, where's the... I think the requisition officer is the other way. Whoops. I'm not going to be able to afford anything I'll talk to him. Hello, Commander. Show me what you've got. Sounds good. Just let me set you up. Well, this must be a mistake. System's telling me to offer you our select stock. Spectre? Well, I heard about that, but I didn't realize it was you. Sorry, Commander. <laughs> Just show me what you've got. I'll open the rare stocks for you, Commander. Enjoy. Yeah, I'd enjoy it a little bit more if this job paid anything. And I had more than 135 credits. So this is fascinating. I can't buy anything now. Okay, bye. <laughs> Okay, now to find the correct elevator. You okay, Tally? It looked like you got some <laughs> dirty looks back there. Many think less of Quarians for traveling in the flotilla and for creating the Geth. They see us as scavengers, little better than thieves. That's sort of what I heard about your people. I guess you're not in any one place long enough for people to get to know you. Okay, that's it. This is awkward. There's no music playing even. <laughs> Okay, anytime. I've got big news for you, Shepard. Captain Whoa. Henderson is stepping down as commanding officer of the Normandy. The ship is yours now. She's quick and quiet, and you know the crew. Perfect ship for a Spectre. Treat her well, Commander. I'm totally surprised by this development. I want the truth. Why are you stepping down, sir? You needed your own ship. A Spectre can't answer to anyone but the Council. And it's time for me to step down. Come clean with me, Captain. You owe me that much. I was in your shoes 20 years ago, Shepard. 
They were considering me for the Spectres. What happened? I failed. I couldn't make the cut. It's not something I'm proud of. Ask me later and I'll tell you the whole story. I'm for now, all you need to know is <laughs> I was sent on a mission with Saren, and he made sure the Council rejected me. I had my shot. It came and went. Now you have a chance to make up for my mistakes. What kind of leads do we have? Saren's gone. Don't even try to find him. Oh, okay. <laughs> but we know what's left. The conduit. He's got his Geth scouring the Traverse looking for clues. We had reports of Geth in the Ferro system shortly before our colony there dropped out of contact, and there have been sightings around Noveria. Find out what Saren was after on Pharos and Noveria. Maybe you can figure out where the conduit is before he does. The Reapers are the real threat. I'm with the Council on this one, Shepard. I'm not sure they even exist. Mm, maybe they don't. Maybe we shouldn't do go exist, after Saren either. The conduit's the key to bringing them back. Stop Saren from getting the conduit, and we stop the Reapers from returning. Anything else? We have one more lead. Matriarch Benezia, the other voice in that recording. She has a daughter, a scientist who specializes in the Protheans. We don't know if she's involved, but it might be a good idea to try and find her. See what she knows. Her name's Liara, Dr. Liara Tassoni. We have reports she was exploring an archaeological dig on one of the uncharted worlds in the Artemis Tau Cluster. Okay. Sounds like we should head for the Artemis Tau Cluster. It's your decision, Commander. You're a Spectre now. You don't answer to us. But your actions still reflect on humanity as a whole. You make a mess and I get stuck cleaning it up. <laughs> I'll take care of Saren. You take care of the political fallout. Not exactly the answer I was looking for, Shepard. Remember, you were a human long before you were a Spectre. <laughs> I have a meeting to get to. Captain Anderson can answer any questions you might have. Yes, Commander? How are you holding up? Honestly, this isn't how I pictured my career coming to an end. Pushing papers really isn't my thing. But you're the one who can stop, Saren. I believe in you, Shepard. If that means I have to step aside, so be it. Tell me what happened with you and Saren 20 years ago. It's close to 20 years ago now. Yeah. Ambassador Goyle was our representative here on the Citadel. Like Udina, she wanted to get a human into the Spectres. She chose me. The Council sent Saren to keep an eye on me and evaluate my performance, just like they sent Nihilus to keep tabs on you. Why weren't you honest with me? It's not something I'm proud of. I had a chance to become the first human Spectre, and I failed. Saren made sure of that. I think I deserve the whole story. We had intel on a rogue scientist being funded by Batarian interests. He was trying to set up a facility to develop illegal AI technology out in the Verge. Alliance Intel had done all the work, but the Council wanted a Spectre involved. We compromised. I was assigned to help Saren in his investigation. We tracked the scientist to a refining facility on Kamala. Kamala he was hidden away somewhere inside, protected by an army of Batarian mercenaries. The plan was simple. Sneak into the plant, capture the scientist, sneak back out. Quick, quiet, and a minimum of bloodshed. I'm guessing things didn't go as planned. Saren and I split up to cover more ground. Then about halfway through the mission, there was a massive explosion in the refinery core. Officially, it was ruled an accident, but I think Saren detonated it on purpose to draw off the enemy guards. <laughs> Good plan. <laughs> he was smart. You needed a diversion. This went way beyond a simple diversion, Commander. The explosion tore the refinery to shreds. The whole place was on fire. Black chemical clouds poured out into the atmosphere. Nobody inside survived. There was a camp for the workers and their families nearby. Between the fires and the toxic fumes, the final death count was over 500. Mostly civilians. Saren didn't care. The target was eliminated. Mission accomplished. And I ended up taking the blame. So it was a good that plan. That ended all talk of me joining the Spectres. Saren caused the explosion. How'd he pin it on you? In his report, Saren accused me of blowing his cover. He said it was my fault the guards were ready for us. He claimed that's why it turned into a massacre. Saren's report was all the proof the Council needed to kill my chances of becoming a Spectre. Don't blame yourself, Captain. I don't. I blame Saren. I think he wanted things to go bad. He was looking for an excuse to blow that refinery. 
Maybe he just likes the violence. Maybe he was just trying to make me look bad to keep humans out of the specters. If so, he pulled it off. Why'd you let him get away with it? Who do you think the Council was going to listen to? Me? Or their best agent? I had a bad feeling about him right from the start. I should have been more careful. Maybe I could have stopped things before they got out of hand. Okay. The only thing I care about is stopping Saren. You're right, Commander. It's no good living in the past. Um, uh, okay. Any extra intel you can give me on our colony at Pharos? The entire planet used to be one giant Prothean city. Mostly ruins now. But some of the infrastructure is still intact. The colony tried to build on what the Protheans left behind. We lost all contact with them when the Geth attacked. What do you know about the Artemis Tau cluster? Not much. I've never been there myself. A handful of systems with a few small, uncharted worlds, but no real colonies. Might not be easy finding Dr. Tassoni out there. My advice is to look for the world with the Prothean ruins. I think we'll find it. What can you tell me about Novaria? Novaria's trouble. Always has been. The whole planet's basically a center for corporations to conduct illegal research. Watch your back there, Shepard. Spectres are about the only form of citadel authority Novaria respects. But they aren't popular. So I think I asked him about working with the Spectres. I don't know. We'll see. I want to know the truth about oh, you and yeah, I, already did okay. I want to know about the mission you were on together all those years ago. I want to hear it again. We had intel on a rogue scientist right, being right. funded by Batarian interests. Alliance right, right, right. We tracked the scientist. The plan was simple. Sneak into the plant. This doesn't matter. Capture the scientist. Sneak back out. Quick. The only thing I care about is stopping <laughs> Sarah. You're right, Commander. It's no good living in the past. Are you okay? Just kidding. I should go. I'll be here if you need anything. All right. Hmm. Where have we here? Hello, beautiful. <laughs> now everything else is just gonna. The the whole series is downhill from here. Now that I've scanned all the keepers, uh, maybe I should level up. Only two points. Maybe I didn't level up that time. Um, there's a few things I want. I guess I'll go for Unity. I guess I'll give her some points into pistols. I need that for shotguns anyway. That's the elevator. The Citadel. Stand by, shore party. Decontamination in progress. Decontamination in progress. Okay. Decontamination in progress. I think I got a special edition of this game with extra decontamination. Decontamination in progress. Okay. <laughs> I heard what happened to Captain Anderson. Survives a hundred battles and then gets taken down by backroom politics. Just watch your back, Commander. If things go bad on this mission, you're next on their chopping block. Saren's out there somewhere. And we're gonna find him. Everyone on this ship's behind you, Commander. 100%. Intercom's open. If you got anything you want to say to the crew, now's the time. Oh yeah, I want to give a big speech. Crew, this is Commander Shepard. We have our orders. Find Saren before he finds the conduit. Um, humanity's in this alone. <laughs> None of the other species has the guts, grit, or balls to deal with this. <laughs> so it's up to us. Ashley's We're the impressed. only ones who can stop Saren. I swear to you all, we will Scoring stop. Points it. with her. 
Well said, Commander. The captain will be proud. <laughs> he doesn't matter anymore. The captain's not here. <laughs> charge now, Joker, and time's wasting. Get this bird in the air. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I don't, I don't usually pick those options, but I thought it'd be pretty funny. Um, does Presley have anything to say? If anyone has to take over for Captain Anderson, I'm glad it's you. I'm not sure about having non-humans on our ship, though. Hmm. Speak freely, Presley. I want to know if you have a problem with non-humans. It's not that, Commander. Humanity has always handled its own problems. Saren attacked one of our colonies. We should be the ones to stop him. We don't need their help. Um, I can't agree with him. <laughs> this is bigger than humanity. Saren's a threat to every species in the galaxy. And I'll welcome anyone who wants to help me bring him down. I guess so. Maybe I'm just stuck in the old ways of thinking. But don't worry, Commander. This won't be a problem. I don't know if I asked the person. How did you end up assigned before. to the Normandy? I signed up with the Alliance as a navigator right out of school, following in my grandfather's footsteps, I guess. My first posting was on the Agincourt. We were at Elysium during the Skillian Blitz. A massive fleet I might have of asked alien him about raiders before, hit the colony, trying to wipe it out. I don't out. remember. They had the numbers, but their ships were no match for an Alliance frigate. It was a slaughter. We couldn't even keep track of how many ships they lost. How'd you end up on the Normandy? I got my officer's commission after Elysium. Must have made an impression on the right people. Captain asked for me when he was picking his crew. Carry on, Presley. Yes, sir. Oh, if I could just open this door. Check out my uh, gear and stuff. I guess I should check on the squad before I talk to the requisitions officer. I think I have all that much stuff anyway. No. Just like one pistol. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah, it looks like this is a waste of time. I was checking. No, I don't think I have anything good. Yeah, I guess I was checking as I went along, so that was a complete waste of time. Let's see what Rex has to say. Nice ship you got, Shepard. What can I do for you? What's your story, Rex? There's no story. <laughs> Go ask the Quarian if you want stories. You Krogan lived for centuries. Don't tell me you haven't had a few interesting adventures. Well, there was this one time the Turians almost wiped out our entire race. That was fun. Oh, that was good. They tried the same with us, but we fought them off. It's not the same. It seems similar enough to me. So your people were infected with a genetic mutation? An infection that makes only a few in a thousand children survive birth? And I suppose it's destroying your entire species? <laughs> You're still here. It can't be all that bad. <laughs> Suck it up. I don't expect you to understand. But don't compare humanity's fate with the Krogan. I was just making conversation. I wasn't trying to upset you. Your ignorance doesn't upset me, Shepard. As for the Krogan, I gave up on them long ago. The genophage infected us. But it's not what's killing us. Are your people really dying? 
We're sure not getting any stronger. We're too spread out. None of us are interested in staying in our own system. Lots of species have left their homes and prospered. But they go to colonize new worlds. We're not settlers. We're warriors. We want to fight. So we leave. Hire ourselves out. And most of us never go back. Uh, this is fascinating. Okay. Let's go through the dialogue. What can you tell me about the genophage? Ask the Salarians if you want details. They made it. I don't see any Salarians around here to ask. All I know, it makes breeding nearly impossible. Thousands die in stillbirth, and most never get that far. Every Krogan is infected, every one. And no one's rushing to find a cure. Why don't the Krogan try to find a cure? When was the last time you saw a Krogan scientist? You ask a Krogan. Would he rather find a cure for the genophage or fight for credits? He'll choose fighting every time. It's just who we are, Shepard. I can't change that. Nobody can. Okay, I'm gonna go fight for credits now. So long, so, yeah. Rex. Shepard. Ashley's over here. Commander? Can we talk? Do you have a few minutes to talk one on one? I'm sorry, Commander. I need to get my duty squared away. I wouldn't mind talking more later, though. How are we doing? What's your opinion on the last mission? Kinda wish you'd got there sooner, Commander. No offense, I appreciate the rescue. I just wish... Oh, I think we already talked about this. They died, you lived. That happens in this job. Yes, Commander. Believe me, I understand that. If I had been more alert, we wouldn't have been cut down by an ambush. <laughs> I don't know if I should try being mean to her or not. <laughs> the answer seems plain enough to me. Be more alert. Aye, aye, Commander. I'll make sure it doesn't happen again. All right. Dismissed, Chief. Sir. I'm usually really nice to her. I figure I might troll her once in a while, though. Thanks for bringing me on board, Commander. I knew working with the Spectre would be better than life at CSEC. Have you worked with a Spectre before? Well, no, but I know what they're like. Spectres make their own rules. You're free to handle things your way. But CSEC, you're buried by rules. The damn bureaucrats are always on your back. Being a Spectre does have its advantages. Exactly my point. If I'm trying to take down a suspect, it shouldn't matter how I do it, as long as I do it. But CSEC wants it done their way. Protocol and procedure come first. That's why I left. So you just quit because you didn't like the way they do things? There's more to it than that. It didn't start out bad, but as I rose in ranks, I got saddled with more and more red tape. CSEC's handling of Saren was typical. I just couldn't take it anymore. I hate leaving. It's not the end of the world. You'll have tougher decisions soon enough. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Either way, I plan to make the most of this. And without CSEC headquarters looking over my shoulder, well, maybe I can get the job done my way for a change. As long as you do your job well, you're free to go about your business as you see fit. Thank you, Commander. I'm looking forward to you going full Charles Bronson. Okay, so check my inventory real quick. Um, I'll get rid of some of these. Upgrades I like better. No. Nope. All right, I'll just talk to him. Looking for supplies? Let's see what you've got. You bet, Commander. Okay, he doesn't have anything I want. Oh, I guess I could talk to some other people. I don't know if he has anything. 
Commander, you know that Quarian Tally? She's been spending all her time down here asking me about our engines. No, get rid of her. I'll tell her to leave you alone. What? No, she's amazing. I wish I'll my guys were half as smart as she is. Give her a month on board and she'll know more about our engines than I do. She's got a real knack for technology, that one. I can see why you wanted her to come along. <laughs> I didn't. Ambassador Udina made me take her along. Normally I don't have anything nice to say about politicians, but he made a good call on this. However, I'm guessing that's not why you came down here. Not really. Okay, I already asked about that. Carry on, Adams. Aye, aye, Commander. Your ship's amazing, Shepard. I've never seen a drive core like this before. I can't believe you were able to fit it into a ship this small. I'm starting to understand why you humans have been so successful. I had no idea Alliance vessels were so advanced. I don't like the idea of aliens <laughs> studying the architecture of Alliance ships. We're on the same side here. My people have more reason to hate the Geth than anyone, remember? But you can't blame me for being a little excited. I never dreamed I'd get a chance to travel on a ship as advanced as the Normandy. I had no idea you found ship technology so interesting. It comes with being a Quarian. The migrant fleet is the key to the survival of my people. Ships are our most valuable resource. But we don't have anything like this. We make do with cast-offs and second-hand equipment. We just try to keep them running for as long as we can. Some of the fleet's larger vessels date all the way back to our original flight from the Geth. I can't believe your fleet's still using ships that are three centuries old. They're constantly being repaired, modified, and refitted. They aren't pretty, but they work. Mostly. We've tried to make ourselves as independent as possible on the flotilla. Grow our own food, mine, and process our own fuel. But some things we just can't make on our own. A patch to maintain the hull integrity requires raw materials we just don't have. That's why our pilgrimages are so important. Okay, I'll buy it. Tell me about all this Tell me about your stuff. Our lives aren't easy. Resources are scarce, and we are constantly on the move. Everything we do must in some way contribute to the continuation of the migrant fleet. There are 17 million Quarians in the flotilla, and each of us relies on the others for survival. The bonds among my people are strong. Unfortunately, we have had to surrender many of the freedoms and civil liberties other species take for granted. That sounds ideal. What kind of freedoms? Well, it's illegal for parents to have more than one child. If our population grows too much, it would strain our resources to their breaking point. Of course, we also can't allow our numbers to become too few. If our population is in decline, the rule against single births is temporarily repealed. In extreme cases of population decline, incentives are even offered to encourage multiple births. Though the Conclave hasn't had to take such measures in nearly a century. That's your government. The Conclave is our civilian branch of government. Each ship can elect a representative to serve on the Conclave and make decisions that affect the fleet as a whole. On matters that affect an individual ship, however, the captain has the final say. It's a tradition that dates back to the early days, when the fleet was governed by martial law. Fortunately, most captains nowadays are smart enough to have an elected council from their crew to give them advice and guidance. So the ultimate power rests with elected officials. In practice, the yeah, you're democratic, but the government council controls for every aspect of your set life. The rules Sounds perfect. That govern our daily lives, but in theory, we are still under military jurisdiction. The five top-ranking military officials in the fleet serve on the Admiralty Board. These five have the power to overrule any decision by the Conclave in case of emergency. To do so requires unanimous agreement among the Admiralty. And they can only do this once. After that, the entire board must resign their posts. It's a safeguard that served us well. In nearly three centuries, the Admiralty Board has only overruled the Conclave four times. Oh, okay. I want to know more about the Geth. I doubt I can tell you anything you don't already know. 
It's been almost three centuries since they drove my people into exile. Are you a Geth under that All suit? All I know is the story of their origins. What they were when we created them, and how they turned on us. Interesting. The Geth were originally created to serve as an automated manual labor force. Initially, their intelligence was as limited as any VI. Over time, we made small modifications to their programming to allow them to perform more varied and complex tasks, bringing them closer and closer to true AI status. What could go wrong? How come the Council didn't step in and stop you? This wasn't true AI research. We may have been skirting the bounds of the law, but we never did anything that was actually illegal. The changes were so insignificant, so gradual, that we were able to control them. Or so we thought. But one thing we underestimated was the power of the neural network. A million Geth thinking simultaneously created an inherently unstable matrix. So, that? the Geth share brain power? Many of the Geth's logic systems were designed to work in concert with other nearby Geth. Basically, the more of them you have in the group, the smarter they are. So there's some sort of group consciousness? No, nothing like that. They cannot share sensory data or information. Their programming cannot handle that much simultaneous input. Each Geth maintains an individual awareness and identity. The neural network only operates on a process-based level. It's basically the synthetic equivalent of a subconscious. But, when they're in close proximity, they can coordinate low-level functional processes, freeing up more capacity for original or independent thought. Huh? That doesn't make any sense. I'm probably oversimplifying. The Geth are incredibly advanced and complex creations. All you need to know is that they get smarter when they gather in large numbers. So they're the opposite of people? As we built more and more Geth, their effective intelligence became more sophisticated, more abstract. One day, a Geth began to ask its Quarian overseer questions about the nature of its existence. Am I alive? Why am I here? What is my purpose? As you can imagine, this caused a near panic among my people. What did you do? It was inevitable the newly sentient Geth would rebel against their situation. We knew they would rise up against us, so we acted first. A general order went out across all Quarian-controlled systems to permanently deactivate all Geth. The Geth responded to this order violently. You didn't really think they'd just let you destroy them without a fight, did you? The hope was that most of the Geth would still be little more than machines, incapable of organized resistance. But they had progressed That's much further than anyone anticipated. Them. The war was long and bloody. Millions upon millions of Quarians died at their hands. In the end, we were forced to flee our own homeworld. We feared the Geth would pursue us, but they never came beyond the Veil. Vale. Now, we drift through space, exile, searching for a way to reclaim what was once ours. <laughs> you got what you deserved. <laughs> we made a mistake when we Shepherd created the Geth Joker. in the first place. But we did not make a mistake when we went to war against them. If we had not acted, they would have wiped us out. They're a synthetic life form. They have no use for organics. None. Why do you think they cut themselves off from the rest of the galaxy? Why do you think they've killed every organic being who's ever tried to contact them? Um, uh, I'm a little distracted by this thing behind me. I think it's sterilizing me. Um, sure. You make a good point. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get so worked up. Most Quarians tend to have pretty strong opinions about the Geth. Tell me about this fascinating pil pilgrimage. I want to know more about the pilgrimage. When my people reach maturity, we leave our birth ships and seek acceptance with a new crew. It's necessary to maintain genetic diversity among the fleet. But no ship wants to accept someone who will be a burden on them. So, to prove our worth, we embark on a pilgrimage. We set out alone, leaving the flotilla and our families behind us. We only return once we have found something of value we can bring back to the fleet. Like a pet this rock is or something? as a gift to the captain of the respective ship we wish to join. If the gift is accepted, we are welcomed into the crew. 
Can a captain choose to reject the gift? And that doesn't happen often. Or if it's Most like a captains troll doll are or something. to increase the size of their crew. It increases their own standing in our society. Even when a gift is not particularly valuable, the captain usually accepts it out of a sense of tradition. However, there is a stigma to presenting a substandard gift. But it is pretty funny. It's not the best way to make a good impression on a new community. Most pilgrims don't return until they find something worthwhile. I can't believe they just send you off alone. It's not like they just cast us out. Before we leave, we are given lessons in how to survive outside the flotilla, and given gifts to help us on our journey. We also receive implants to fight off sickness and disease. Like Generations of living in an isolated and highly controlled environment have left our immune systems weaker than most. By the time we leave the fleet, we are well equipped for the pilgrimage. This is a rite of passage for all Quarians. If it were dangerous, our numbers would suffer. Virtually every pilgrimage ends with a triumphant return and the ritual presentation of the gift to one of the fleet's captains. I want to talk about something else. Like what? Like nothing. Bye. I should go. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> All right. I didn't realize my crew is going to be so talkative. Filled up the whole episode. I go back upstairs. If I can activate this elevator. Alright. So I think maybe next. I might do like a side mission before the main mission just to get like maybe some XP and some gear first. But I'm gonna save and uh, wrap up the episode here.